Hi everyone, it's Courtney with the Colorado Wolf and Wildlife Center. Oh, and today <laughs> I'm in here with Rockshot, Issa, and Kenai. Hi. So Kenai is usually in with Kiko and Sakara, but he decided to babysit our two nine month old puppies. These guys are in fact puppies, like I said, nine months old. So they are getting older, they're getting much, much bigger. Our two Arctics, you can see they're very, very tall, very lanky. So again, this is Issa. The one that just walked towards the camera is Raksha. And then here we have Kenai. So what we're gonna do today is just give you guys some fun facts about wolves. We have a lot of people that ask questions in the comments after these videos, and we do viewer's choice once a month, but we thought we'd just kind of answer some really fun facts and just common things to know about wolves. Really good information that's just basic information. So they have 42 teeth and we only have 32, so just 10 more than us. Their jaw power here is 1,500 pounds of pressure per bite. That is a lot, and that's because these guys are having to take down much, much larger animals than them. So their primary food sources are elk and deer. That's definitely what they want to eat before anything else. Be good puppies. Now these guys, their primary thing is caribou, bison, stuff like that in the Arctic. Now they also have extremely large paws, little snowshoes on their feet. These guys have webbed feet to keep them on top of the snow when they are hunting. Their feet can actually grow to be four inches wide by five inches long huge paws that are really, really helping them. So these guys howl actually just like our fingerprints. It's specific to them. So these two, even though they're brothers, they do not have the same howl. Now, Raksha and Issa's howl are much, much different than each other. Same with Kenai and Kiko and Sakara. Their howl in a heavily wooded area can actually travel six miles so they can still hear each other up to that point and be able to respond back. In the tundra where it's very, very open, they can hear each other from 10 miles and be able to communicate. In the wild, these guys are going to howl every single day at least twice a day, and that's at dawn and dusk. That's your prime hunting areas, and they're howling at each other in their wolf pack to say, hey, let's go out and hunt. They actually also communicate with other wolf packs in the wild for territorial reasons. They'll use their scent markings, that's all the scent glands in their body, they'll use that and rub it up against things, but they'll also howl back and forth to each other saying, this is our territory. It does help prevent some conflicts with these two, uh, with different wolf packs. So not only do they have their own individual house, these guys actually have 23 different dialects. So here, we don't have the two species of wolf. There are only two, and then they have subspecies. So there's the gray wolf and the red wolf. We're hoping to get the red wolf one day, but right now all we have are the gray wolves and their subspecies, which is the Arctics and the Alaskan interiors. Now the funny thing about this is we also have two Mexican grays, which also is a subspecies of wolf. They're furthest related. They're shorter, they're stockier, they're different areas in different regions of the country. So when our Arctics, our timbers, our tundras, and our gray wolves howl, our Mexican grays actually don't understand them and they don't howl back. Our Mexican grays actually howl by themselves. All of our gray wolves tend to keep quiet because they're saying, we don't really know Spanish. We don't know what that is. We like to joke about that here, that they're just speaking English and the Mexican grays, of course, have Mexican grays and I'm so Spanish. But oh, there you go. Someone wants some pets today. So if you can see here, really, really long hair on these guys. These guys can do 70 degrees below zero. Our gray wolves can do 45 degrees below zero. What I'm petting right here is actually ho hollow guard hairs, if you can see that in the sun. These can grow up to six and a half inches long. What's gonna happen in the Arctic, of course, very, very cold, very, very harsh climate. The sun is actually gonna travel down these hollow guard hairs and hit their black skin, so it's gonna warm them up so they are able to survive. Here it is pretty warm, we're in March, and it's already feeling like uh, spring, summerish. so these guys are a little bit warm, they're kind of lethargic. What we're actually gonna do is see if we can get them to play since they are playing together. to show you some more footage of them playing and try to get them to play a very, very playful mood today. They love being with their uncle Kenai. Before that happens, we have been posting quite a bit on our Facebook about the competition we're in. So for those of you that don't know about it, we were actually, our facility, Colorado Wolf and Wildlife Center, was voted in 10 Best Traveler Awards. Here you go. We are voted as one of the best safari parks. So there's actually 20 safari parks that are in this competition. You can vote every single day. We're gonna put the link in this wolf block 
vlog. And what that's going to do is help us win and get uh, <laughs> and uh, get uh, featured on USA Today, which would be really, really awesome. We'd get more people here in Colorado, get more people at the center, and of course, 100% of the proceeds go back to them. So that'd be really awesome to see. So please, everyone, vote, vote regularly every single day, once a day, of course. We'll keep posting that link on there so it's easy for you to get to. The competition is one month, so make sure you're voting every single day for these next four weeks. It ends March 27th, actually at 11.59 at night. And so again, if we win, we'll be on USA Today and you guys can give yourself a little pat on the back and be really proud for us and then come visit us again. So again, this is Courtney from the Colorado Wolf and Wildlife Center. Thank you.